Now, since we have just an ESLint installed in a project, we can automate development workflow by using GitHub Actions to check pull requests or PRs for linting and testing errors. As an added bonus, I'll be sharing a pull request checklist that I use in my development process, so stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel to help YouTube recommend it to more viewers. I am in Node.js project where I have TypeScript, Jest, ESLint and Prettier installed. If you would like to learn how to do it, check out my previous videos. In order to automate code review with the GitHub Actions, we're going to do the following. Define workflows in .github workflows. Each workflow consists of one or more jobs, which contain steps that define the tasks to be performed. Trigger events. Each workflow is triggered by various events, such as code pushes, pull requests, issues, and more. In our case, we will be triggering a workflow on pull request into main branch. Run actions. Actions are individual tasks that can be executed as a part of workflow. You can use actions from GitHub Marketplace or write custom actions using JavaScript and Docker. Let's go ahead and create lint and test workflow. We are going to be creating it in .github workflows folders. So let's go ahead and do code .github workflows. And now we will do lint and test workflow and the extension will be yaml or yml and in this file we're going to put the following we're going to name workflow lint and test workflow the trigger will be on pull request into branch main and we're going to do the following right we have jobs here and we'll just define one job lint and test the name of this job will be also lint and test it's going to run on ubuntu latest in the strategy matrix, we're going to put node version 20.9 and we're going to define the steps. So we're going to use predefined actions to check out the repository. The next step will set up Node.js. We'll give it a name, Node.js with a version. It's going to use predefined actions, set up node v3, and it will define node version from the matrix. Next, we're going to run npm install CI, and CI means clean install, so it's going to take package log.json and install dependencies from there. Then we're going to do npm run lint, and finally npm run test. Next, we're going to add pull request checklist, and we're going to put this checklist in a .github folder. So we're going to do code.github, and then we're going to do pull request underscore template dot md and let's go ahead and put the following checklist in here right so we're going to have checklists for the code following the styled guidelines non commented out code or debugging statements right if you update documentation that is necessary you know such as readme file or env.example uh, you edit tests and uh, no sensitive information now we're good to go to create a Git repository and push it to GitHub. But before we do that, let's create a .git ignore file. We'll do code .git ignore. And in the Git ignore, we're going to put node modules, uh, dist folder, and .env file. Obviously, as your project progresses, you're going to put some more files in here. Let's go ahead and initialize git in our project. So we'll do git init. Next, let's add the files and create the first commit. So we'll do git add. That means everything. And we're going to do git commit with message initial commit. Now let's go ahead and switch to the browser. And we're going to create a new repository in the GitHub. We're going to call it node template 2024. Okay, and we're just going to hit create repository. So let's go and copy the remote right here. And our branch is already named the main, so we don't have to do anything. Or if your branch is master, you can rename it into main using this command. And then we're going to push our code to the GitHub repository. So in the browser, let's paste the following. And now we'll do git push-u flag, because it's the first push. 
we'll put origin main. And our code is in the Git repository now. Let's switch to the browser and verify it, right? If we go to node template, we can see that we have a repository. Now we can actually go to settings and make this repository a template. All right. And right now let's go ahead and check if our workflow is working and we can see the checklist. So all we need is to create a PR or pull request into the main branch. In the VS code, we're going to create file readme.md. And in the file, we're going to put the following. We'll do template for node.js project. Obviously, you can add some more things in here, what you have installed and everything else. Let's go ahead and create a new branch. Git checkout dash b readme file. All right, and now let's do git add and git commit with a message added readme file. Now let's push our code to the repository. So we'll do git push origin readme file. And the branch got created. So let's switch to the browser. And right here, we already have readme file and compare and pull requests. So Git is really good about it. And as you can see, we have pull request checklist already available. So let's go ahead and create a pull request. And then we got this checking for ability to merge automatically. The lint and test workflow kicked in. As you can see, the check have passed so we're all good to merge however if our tests fail it won't really prevent us from merging but we want to set the rule where well we will need a review for example for a pull request and uh, we want our checks to pass before even this pull request can be merged you can click here git is very helpful on add rule right here and then you can go and do the create a rule set you can also do that from obviously settings and branches, right? So if you go to the branches, it used to be classic protection rule and it's actually still there. You can add it as a classic protection rule, but now GitHub introduced uh, branch rule sets. So let's go ahead and create the branch rule set. We're gonna give this rule set name PR into main branch. We can enable this rule set Let's configure bypass list and usually you'll get uh, bypass uh, to admins, right? So they can merge if something goes wrong or something, you need to merge the request and override the rule. Uh, admins can do that. In the targets, we can specify the target branch. We can put include default branch, right? And main is currently the default one. Or we can do include by pattern. And in the pattern, we can simply put main. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the rules and GitHub already helps us, right? It checks the restrict deletions and block force pushes. We're also gonna check require pull request before merging and we're gonna have required approvals. We're gonna set to one, so pull request should be approved. And then we're also gonna check require status checks to pass. This is gonna be our automated PR checks and we're gonna search for lint and test. Right, and we here, right here, we have a lint and test. So let's go ahead and check it. And now we're gonna click create and our rule set is created. Let's go ahead back and take a look at the PR. And as you can see, merging is blocked because there is a review is required. So, and I cannot merge it right here. If the automated checks had failed, it would have been the same thing, right? We wouldn't be able to merge it unless you're an admin or something. So let's go ahead and head back to the settings. Uh, let's go ahead to rules and rule sets and PR into main branch. We can just go ahead uh, in the require pull request for merging. We can uncheck it for now. So, and uh, we'll click save changes. We'll go back to the pull request add readme file now the checks have passed and i can merge this pull request let's go ahead and merge this 
As you can see, GitHub Actions is a powerful tool that helps automate different parts of software development. It makes life easier for developer and teams by simplifying their work process and keeping their code quality high. Another tool that helps developers automate process is Nodeman. It automatically restarts the Node application when it detects changes to files in the project directory. In the next video, we will configure our TypeScript Node.js project with Nodeman. Please check it out.